An Introduction to Buffers, brought to you by Whiteboard Science. The purpose of a buffer is to resist changes in pH when acids or bases are added to a solution, and these are extremely important in the human body. The average pH of human blood is 7.4, which keeps us nice and happy. However, a pH as low as 6.8 can be bad news. So how exactly do buffers keep our blood pH in the narrow window we need it to be? Let's review. When an acid is thrown into solution, it will donate a proton and leave behind an anion or conjugate base. Remember that the pH of a solution is equal to the negative log of the proton concentration, since P is a symbol for negative log. Let's say we have a fishbowl. If we throw in some acid, we won't get free protons floating around inside. Instead, the water molecules inside the fishbowl will grab onto the protons and form hydronium, or H3O plus molecules. In fact, the proton concentration in the pH equation is actually shorthand for the hydronium concentration, which means that it will be hydronium ions floating around in the fishbowl. Remember that if we dissolve a weak acid, like carbonic acid, into solution, it will be in equilibrium with its conjugate base bicarbonate. The amount of carbonic acid that will actually dissolve is represented by the acid's pKa, which is equal to the negative log of the Ka, or acid dissociation constant. Carbonic acid's pKa is 6.4, making it a weak acid since the pKa is close to 7. All buffers are actually weak acids in equilibrium with their conjugate bases. In fact, carbonic acid is the buffer found in human blood. So how do buffers work exactly? Well, let's say we have two fish bowls and we only add carbonic acid to one. What happens if we then add a strong acid like hydrochloric acid to both bowls? Well, in the fishbowl without the buffer, the hydrochloric acid will react with the water to form chloride ions and hydronium ions. The same reaction can occur in the buffered bowl, or the hydrochloric acid can react with bicarbonate ions to form carbonic acid molecules. Since the pKa of hydronium is negative 1.7 and the pKa of carbonic acid is 6.4, it's much more likely that the hydrochloric acid will react with the buffering bicarbonate than with the water. Remember that pH is equal to the negative log of the hydronium concentration. In the first bowl, hydronium will definitely be formed, which will mean that the pH of the fishbowl will drop upon adding hydrochloric acid. In the second bowl, not much hydronium is formed at all, so the pH will stay relatively constant. Let's do some math. Remember that Ka is the acid dissociation constant. Let's isolate this expression for the proton concentration, and then take the negative log of both sides of the equation. Using log rules, we can expand this equation and then simplify further. Now don't worry if you need to watch this section of the video a few times. Deriving equations can be very challenging. Now since we can use p as a symbol for negative log, we come to the expression pH equals pKa plus the log of the ratio of A minus to HA. This is called the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation and is extremely useful for making calculations with buffers, and you should definitely consider committing this equation to memory. Have any questions? Post them in the comment section below to get an answer. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more. Good luck with studying!